jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland This is Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes listening for the first time and you may be struggling to hear it, it might be useful to get some headphones because I've got a, a friend who couldn't really hear the recordings very well but now she got herself some headphones and is really enjoying these recordings. Plus, to be honest, I'd probably struggle to listen without headphones as well, because I'm partially deaf in one ear. So, you know, it, it's a case of doing whatever works for you. Now, I'd like to thank you for listening. Thank you for your support, and please... If you haven't already done so, maybe uh, you could subscribe to this podcast. That way you'll be notified when new recordings are uploaded. And maybe even leave a comment or share this recording on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or I don't know where, different places. So I'm going to do a very basic, very basic body scan. I'm hoping there won't be any background sounds, but I can't guarantee that. But in a way, I don't think it really matters, because I don't, I don't think I've ever once gone to sleep. Silence. You can always hear something, whether it's the fridge in the in the kitchen or Mr. Pigeon, Horace the Pigeon, that seems to just be following me around. He's currently in the garden. It might just be your own breathing. Which is a good sign, you know, we want that to be there. So it's okay to have some background sound. Of course, you wouldn't necessarily want a clown riding a unicycle in your bedroom, letting off a big horn, you know. That would be distracting. Hopefully you don't have any such things. So I'd like you to first of all close your eyes. But before you close your eyes, lay down on your bed if you can. When you lay down on your bed, your body automatically starts to relax because that is the natural state to be in, laying down on a bed, something that we've been doing since we were born, since we were little babies. Let's face it, we spent most of our time in a little bed when we were born. So your body, even if your mind doesn't think about it, in that logical way, your body knows that there's a connection between laying down and going to sleep. It's a much deeper connection. 
than perhaps we give credit to. And then your head touches the pillow. Your mind has that connection, knowing that it's time to just slow down. You know, in all honesty, being able to think about things is an amazing thing. It's a wonderful gift that we have as humans to be able to think things through. But you don't need to do it while you're lying in bed. There's a time and a place for everything. That's why you wipe your bum when you're on the toilet. You don't wait till you get to the supermarket. Because that's where you do your shopping. You don't go to the hairdressers to have a bath. You know, a time and a place. Of course, not everybody goes to bed just to sleep, but the bed is still associated with sleeping. And let's face it, it's, I'll be honest with you, I think my bed is my favourite thing in the whole world. I love my bed. I love sleeping. I don't spend all my time asleep, but I do love sleeping. Always been one of my favourite things. And I think it's because of the relaxation. Because your body has to relax. There's no option when you're asleep. Your body relaxes, and of course it's going to get a little bit tense at times, depending on what you're dreaming about, but it's still going to be a heck of a lot more relaxed than before you lie down on your bed. And knowing that, like really knowing it, not, not just, you know, well, maybe, Maybe what I'm saying is true. You know it's true. We've been trained from a baby, from, you know, an hour into being born. Maybe two hours, I don't know how long before you're in a cradle. You're in a, a little baby bed, whatever they're called, wherever you're from. Got lots of different names. I was going to say manger, but you know, and it's comfortable. And when you're a baby, you just fall asleep. And that's where you grow, that's where your body and your mind and your brain. It still is. The difference is we don't physically get bigger when you're adults. We don't get bigger by sleeping. Physically. But our bodies do repair themselves when we sleep. And our brains also repair themselves when we sleep and there seems to be a process going on also when we sleep that we I think through dreaming we process stuff that maybe either we didn't have time to process before or we just didn't feel able to Also, the, the brain does 
last grow. Your brain grows from the new learnings from the day before, creating new neural pathworks or pathways. And your brain sends those chemicals to the different parts of your body those hormones, those chemicals, that healing energy so that your body heals itself so they might, you know, you might have a sprained ankle or something like that or a cut on your thumb and your brain sends automatically that healing and although that also happens when you're awake, it seems to really go into full drive when you're asleep. An analogy would be the an underground train station, like a, a subway, metro, the underground... Um, I'm trying to think of other countries' versions, but you know, like in New York or France or uh, Germany or England, you know, so, so many different ones. They're open to the public for long, long periods of time, from maybe five, six in the morning until possibly two o'clock in the in the morning or one o'clock the next morning. So the maintenance, the cleaning, the engineering, the working on the tracks, making sure that the trains are, you know, getting the trains back, cleaning the trains, checking the engines, all that stuff is done while the train station is asleep. So being asleep isn't just being lazy. It isn't just doing something for the sake of it. Or just doing it because you're tired. Feeling tired isn't the only reason to go to sleep. Going to sleep is something that we need to do. Every day. Every night, you know, once a day for six plus hours, however long you personally need. So this is inbuilt within us. There's no learning involved. It might be a case of unlearning behavior that gets in the way of you tapping in to your natural ability that you're born with to sleep naturally and easily. And it may seem like I'm going on and on and on and on and on. But this is true. This is a simple fact. That actually, what you say to yourself has a big effect upon what actually happens. So if you've been telling yourself that you don't, you, you know, you, you have trouble sleeping and you can't get to sleep and all that stuff, your unconscious mind takes that on starts to believe it. But if you say to yourself, I can sleep easily. I can sleep automatically. I can lay down on the bed. My body naturally relaxes and my head touches the pillow and my mind automatically slows down. And you say that to yourself. Con 
constantly saying that to yourself and reminding yourself your unconscious mind believes that and therefore gives you that and because it's it's true because you can just lay down on your bed and fall asleep because you have done thousands of times thousands and thousands of times now unless you're two years old then you, you could argue that point but I'm guessing most people listening to this will have been to sleep or laid in their bed thousands of times and when you think about that it's quite a lot I mean I'll be 50 in a couple of months I mean that's millions of times I've been to sleep <laughs> it's a lot and you know what sleeping really is easy and regardless of whether it's annoying to hear that it is true because most people fall asleep every night of course there's a lot of people that struggle with it which is why I make these recordings because, you know, between a mixture of me boring you by just chatting, a mixture of you feeling relaxed because, and tired because that's what you connect my voice to. If you've been listening to me for a while, some people have been listening to me for over 10 years. So it's about just allowing the process to happen without giving yourself a hard time. Which comes back to the whole idea that you deserve to be happy. So be kind to yourself. So when you're lying down on your bed, your body relaxes, your head touches the pillow and your mind starts to slow down. Now, you can observe what you're saying to yourself. And if there's one, one word or sentence that's unkind, stop it. Tell it to stop. Tell that sentence, tell that word to stop. Because let's face it, if there's one person in the whole world out of seven billion people that you should be able to say nice things to, it's yourself. No one's going to judge you. No one can hear you. So when you're lying in your bed, body relaxes, head touches a pillow, your mind slows down. And you say to yourself, either out loud or inside your mind, I'm nice. I'm a nice person. I'm a lovely person. You can tell yourself that you're handsome, you're beautiful, you can tell yourself that you're sexy, you can tell yourself that you're hugely clever, intelligent, sleeping is easy, relaxing is easy. Start focusing on the nice stuff because if, for example, you 
decide to be laying there and thinking about things, then why not choose some nice stuff to think about? If you are on a plane going a long distance travel, you would maybe, I've never done it, but apparently you have choice of movies, you would choose one that you wanted to watch. You're not going to choose, you know, like an airplane disaster movie, are you? You're going to choose a film that you want to watch. So when you're lying on your bed, your body is relaxing. Your head touches the pillow and your mind slows down. You may even choose to start thinking about some nice things. As you enjoy the feeling of your body being supported by the bed. Because that's one of the things that I kind of it came to me a while back. Lying in bed is not all about, you know, getting to sleep. I must go to sleep right now. It's never going to help you get to sleep. It's the opposite. You need to be gentle to yourself. Gentle to yourself the way that you would be gentle to a baby. And you might be the biggest, strongest, toughest person in the world and think, oh, I don't need to be gentle to myself. Rah, rah, rah. Well, you do. You really do. We all do. We all need to be gentle with ourselves. It doesn't matter who you are. Whether you're the king of a country, or if you work in a chip shop, or you know, whatever, it doesn't matter. You need to be kind to yourself. It's probably the most important, one of the most important things can do for you. So when you're lying on your bed, your body's relaxing naturally because that's what happens. You don't really have uh, much control of that. Your body, it's almost like your body's doing its own thing. Your head touches the pillow and your mind slows down and you can start to think nice things towards yourself. Be your own supporter and this needs to extend outside of the bedroom. This needs to carry on throughout your day. Not from a sleep perspective, but just from a kindness perspective. To be your own supporter. To be your own best friend. Basically, to show yourself love, unconditional love, unconditional regardless of what's happened in the past. And the more you allow yourself to experience that love within you, the more kind things you say to yourself. Not only will you be able to sleep much deeper and have a great night's sleep, you'll also start to feel happier within yourself. 
himself. Other times through the day, feeling more relaxed and calmer, starting to appreciate yourself and actually noticing that you really are an amazing person. in person and you deserve to be happy. You deserve to sleep deeply. You deserve Love yourself unconditionally. Love yourself. Sleep. So 